should you upgrade to the new M4 iMac? And if you do, which model should you buy? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing 10 major reasons to upgrade because Apple actually upgraded more things than I personally thought, including some massive surprises that you can't get, not even on the M3 Max MacBook Pro, which is crazy. So let's get right into it with number one. 16 gigabytes of RAM in 2024. It took Apple probably five, six years too late to bring this. They've been at eight gigs for the longest time and it's been embarrassing. Finally, people can stop making fun of Apple because we have 16. But the craziest thing is that they did not increase the price. $12.99, same price for 16 gigs, which kind of blew my mind because I thought maybe they would raise it a little bit or sacrifice some things, but 16 gigs, that is an amazing deal. And this is actually a really big deal because the models that Apple sells in their stores that people come in and buy, they're always the base models. They used to be eight. Now, nobody has to worry about which one they buy because they start with 16. And that's enough for multitasking, for performance work, for opening tons of Chrome tabs. You don't have to worry anymore. It's gonna perform so much better. Now moving on to number two, Apple did something that I personally did not expect. All four of the ports on the upgraded M4 iMac model now support Thunderbolt 4 speeds because the previous model, the M3, and the ones before that, you had two Thunderbolt ports and two regular USB-Cs, which means that if you plug something in on accident in the wrong port, you're not getting the full speeds. If you have something like a crazy fast Thunderbolt SSD, now all four of them have the fastest speed, and that's because the M4 chip has a brand new Thunderbolt controller with four controllers instead of only two on the previous M1, M2, and M3 chips. So that is really nice, but keep in mind, you have to pay for the higher end $1,500 model because the base one still comes with the same two USB-Cs. Now for number three, finally Apple has ditched Lightning pretty much officially. We used to have Lightning on all these accessories and it was so annoying because you have to keep your Lightning cable around. You can't just switch to only USB-C. Well, now you can because they all have USB-C ports. Now, Apple didn't upgrade or redesign the products themselves. They're basically identical just with USB-C ports, which a lot of people are disappointed, but I personally didn't expect it to get redesigned in any way because I mean, the only way they can make this better is making it bigger and bulkier, and then that's gonna seem like a downgrade. So finally, Lightning is dead. And you could actually go on Apple's website and order the new black versions separately, which is really cool. For upgrade number four, we of course have the M4 chip. Now, we already know the performance we should expect with this iMac because we had that Russian leak with the M4 MacBook Pro, and I believe it's fully legit, so we know the scores, but, Keep in mind that Apple is giving the base $1,300 model a binned M4 chip. Now what that means is that some of the actual cores inside of it have flaws. So Apple will take the ones with flaws, they'll disable some of the cores and ship those in the less expensive models. And it turns out the base model has only an eight core CPU instead of 10 and only an eight core GPU instead of 10 graphics cores. So I can't tell you just yet how that's gonna perform because we don't know the scores, but if you want to subscribe above because we're gonna be testing out this model. In terms of the full $1,500 model, we're looking at 23% faster single core, which is great, 27% faster multi-core, which is even better, and believe it or not, it actually performs as well as the 12-core M3 Pro chip, which is a lot more expensive. You used to have to pay $2,000 for the M3 MacBook Pro to get that, and you're getting the same performance in the iMac, and 17.4% graphics per performance, which is gonna help for gaming and other tasks. And now moving on to number five, the fifth reason you should upgrade. Believe it or not, this is the first Mac ever that supports an 8K resolution display at 120 hertz. Yes, first Mac ever, not even the 16 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro for $3,500 supports this. It only goes up to 8K at 60 Hertz, which I can't believe Apple would do that on this cheap iMac. I mean, $1,500 and you're getting 8K support, which is just nuts. Now moving on to number six, Apple actually upgraded the selfie camera to a 12 megapixel sensor with center stage support, which means that it's actually an ultra wide and it zooms into your face 
to give you that good framing. So if you're slightly off or if you have, let's say you're walking around your room, it's gonna track you around the room while you're doing your FaceTime call or recording or whatever else, which is really, really cool. Now for upgrade number seven, for the first time ever, this iMac now supports up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Yes, it comes with 16, you can go up to 24, which was the previous limit, and now you can do even more 32 gigs, and that's a really big deal for the people that really wanted to have at least 32 gigs of RAM for their productivity work, but they had to go and buy a more expensive Mac like the Mac Studio to get that much. Well, you don't have to anymore. You can do it with the M4 iMac, which can save people a lot of money. Now for number eight, this was actually kind of a surprise. Apple is giving you the option to get nano texture glass. So if you're someone who absolutely hates glossy displays because let's say you have a very bright environment or you got like windows everywhere and you can't stand reflections, well, there you go. Apple has solved that with the nano texture glass. It keeps it all matte gets rid of the reflections, and a lot of people actually like it. Me personally, I like glossy, but it's cool that you have the option. Now for number nine, we have Apple intelligence support on this M4 iMac, which actually existed on all the other iMacs, actually. The uh, M3 chip model had it, the M1 had it, they all support Apple intelligence, but this one is faster, and it's a lot faster because this has a 16 core neural engine, which hasn't changed in terms of the core count, but it performs so much faster for AI workloads because we actually had the Russian M4 MacBook Pro leak and we got over 50,000 points in Geekbench AI in terms of the quantized score, which is crazy fast, like a lot faster than the M3 and much faster than the M1. So it's gonna be doing a lot of the neural engine Apple intelligent tasks on the device itself instead of having to go up to the cloud like the other ones might. And finally, for number 10, you have a bunch of new color options and some of them are actually really, really cool. First of all, you have blue, which was there before, but it's now lighter than it was. You have a brand new purple, it's a different color. You have a new pink, which is finally a lot more pink than it was before. You've got orange, you've got a new yellow that's very, very light yellow compared to the more darker yellow we had. You got a new green and you have a silver that's even brighter than before. So it's cool that people get more color options so you can personalize it to your personality, your home, your style. Now, before I get into the original question of whether you should upgrade or not and which model you should buy, I do wanna mention a couple of downsides. First of all, of course, you have a Bend 8 core GPU on the base model, which believe it or not, the previous iMac did not have a bend chip. It had a full 10 core GPU. So Apple is cutting away two cores on this pace model, which is very unfortunate. And the other downside is that we still have Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, the same specs as we had on the M3 iMac, stays the same for the M4. And now with that said, should you upgrade? Well, honestly, I'm actually more surprised than I thought I would be with this update pleasantly surprised, I think a lot of people should upgrade. Not necessarily from the M3, because that one was already very good, so you won't get as much of a difference, but if you have the M1, this is finally a great upgrade to the M1 iMac. I would actually recommend it, especially going for the $1,500 model with 16 gigs of RAM and the four ports and everything else. That's a nice upgrade. And that model is actually the one that I would recommend $1,500, except the only downside is the 256 gigs of storage. I would definitely recommend at least 512. And if you wanna keep it for like five to 10 years, like long term, one terabyte is a really good sweet spot. I don't recommend two terabytes. I think that's overkill. It just gets way too expensive, but between 512 and a terabyte is good. And you do wanna get the 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU model. That's the one I would be buying if I was you. So with that said, if you wanna see us test both of the models, if you wanna see the eight core, how it performs, subscribe above so you don't miss out on those videos and definitely check out one of those two right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.